coming up on ATV News. We'll show you how Aggie Blue Bikes is helping students get around campus. It's raining, it's pouring, but is there sun in the forecast? We'll let you know coming up in weather. See how one USU student played the role of ultimate matchmaker. Coming up on ATV Sports, after five straight losses, was the volleyball team finally able to pull out a win? We'll show you how they did. All that and more, this is ATV News. made one heck of a loud bang. My cookhouse. That loud bang came from what Randy Lewis says was lightning hitting solar panels, which caused a fire in his home. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Sarah Winder. And I'm Jamie Sun. A fire started early this morning from what may have been the result of a thunderstorm. Around 8.30 a.m., firefighters rushed to 400 West 300 North in Hiram to put out a structure fire. Arriving at the home, there was smoke coming up through the attic. Firefighters broke through a wall to get inside and put out the flames. While Lewis says he thinks lightning was the cause, Fire Chief Kevin Munn says it's still under investigation. All I can tell you is the electrical panel, at first glance, there's no arcing or burning in that in the house, and so I, I don't know. A local family and their cats are safe this weekend, despite a fire in their home. Logan firefighters were able to keep the fire restricted to the attic. None of the family was in the house when firefighters arrived, but there were a few cats there. Officials searched for the pets, but did not find them. They believe the cats were able to flee the home and survive. Though the roof will need to be replaced, most of the family's belongings were saved. Firefighters had to take out the ceiling to successfully prevent the fire from spreading. Fortunately, our guys were prepared, they were ready. Uh, they did, I think, a tremendous job getting inside, which still is a pretty hazardous environment, and pretty dangerous, uh, able to get the fire knocked down and, and things under control. Hansen said the cause of the fire was unknown. Homeowners in Wellsville are worried after a fire burned around 75 acres land 100 yards away from their homes. September 9th at 4.30 p.m., the mouth of Sardine Canyon was flooded with smoke as firefighters fought the flames from the ground and the air. With the fire only a few hundred yards away from a home development, some homeowners worried about evacuation. But the wind pushed the fire the other direction, keeping their homes safe. After a couple hours, the fire was contained. It's believed to be human cost. Yes, the general public, please be careful. Uh, the open burn is going to start in another week, so uh, we advise everybody to please be careful when they do have open burns, um, when they're out recreating, to please still be careful. Some people did not have power while the fire was being controlled, but the outage was only lasted a few hours. This year, Aggie Blue Bikes turns 10, and the store went under some renovations. I went there to show you how their improvements can help you out. From just one mechanic board and nine bikes to 320 bikes and five mechanics, Aggie Blue Bikes has grown over the past 10 years to become a major service for Utah State students. I ride my bike every day. That's my way to commute. If you don't have a bike of your own but still need to get around, that's what Aggie Blue Bikes is for. Come to USU, we have blue bikes, you can get a free bike. Before students can ride away from Aggie Blue Bikes, they have to take a safety quiz with questions about Utah's bike laws. Hopefully, we are kind of helping to create and instill habits in people. And if you already have a bike, Aggie Blue Bikes is happy to teach you how to fix it when it breaks down. Everyone in here is super nice, like super willing to help you. Like there aren't any dumb questions here, which is nice. With all the growth Aggie Blue Bikes has seen the past 10 years, 
They hope to keep up with demands and keep providing students with transportation. To be honest, a lot of the people that get our bikes don't really have another form of transportation. So when they get a bike, kind of the whole world opens up for them, the whole Cache Valley realm. Sarah Winder, ATV News. You can find Aggie Blue Bikes between the Fieldhouse and Military Science Building on, U on the USU campus. It's open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. As the semester starts, some students found a way to get the year rolling with balls. Those students bouncing around in a Zor ball are members of the Biological Engineering Club. The club held their opening social Thursday selling rights in their Zor ball, selling t-shirts, giving out free food, and recruiting potential new members. The club started about two years ago and is striving to grow as the student body grows. The club provides many resources for students interested in biological engineering and hopes to continue to build their reputation on campus. It certainly has a lot more of an identity as a sort of an academic network for students to lean on each other and look for tutors and look for laboratory opportunities. The club's contact information can be found on our Facebook page. All basketball operations at Utah State's Eastern Campus are canceled until further notice in the midst of a sexual assault investigation. The assault was reported on September 4th and some basketball players are being investigated. Though the local police officer hasn't released what the team's involvement was specifically, USU's public relations said there were enough details to temporarily shut down the team. A witness reported the incident to a school counselor, who then went to the victim, advised her to get medical and advised her to get medical attention. USU issued a warning to students at the Eastern Campus that informed them of the incident and included safety tips. As the investigation moved forward, uh, several uh, troubling details arose, uh, and it caused us to look closely uh, at. Uh, the basketball program and, and uh, some members of it. Police are still investigating the assault, but Vitali said the findings are expected to be released later this week. When we come back, aside from looking cool, we'll show you what makes this car so special. And we'll show you how a USU student tried to give his friend's dating life a little push. Aggie Air is an innovative engineering program exclusive to Utah State. It provides opportunities for students to get hands-on and real-world experiences. By building model planes that photograph and scan detailed images of landscapes, Aggie Air can change the way we use the Earth's surface. Watch as Aggie Air takes flight. Welcome back. It's rush week on USU campus right now, and you can attend many events to see if you want to go Greek. These events are for students to explore the different chapters and learn about what each organization represents. With the new recruits, each fraternity and sorority is raising awareness against sexual assault due to recent events involving members of the Pi Kappa Alpha and Sigma Chi, which had their memberships revoked after some of their members were accused of sexual assault. These two fraternities are not included in the Rush Week events. That's not something that we're about. You know, just because we are a part of these organizations who actually have values that are a lot deeper than sexual assault goes, it's kind of like holding each other accountable to live to those standards. Greek Life is working with the student association Walk a Mile in Her Shoes and CAPSA to raise awareness. Peach Days has been around since 1904, and one of the attractions is the famous car show. Our Caroline Peterson stopped by to talk to a Cash Valley man who plays a big role in the history of the festival. Caroline? Thanks, Jamie. So Ernie Crockett was actually the first person to win a trophy at the Peach Days Car Show Festival in 1979. I went to Brigham City to show you the car that took first place in the first place. Ernie and his hot rod started on a journey 42 years ago when he built it into the bright red loud car it is today. I wanted this to represent an era that uh, at that time was the old fenderless type hot rods that used to race and just cruise around. 
Now, the 1932 Ford Chopped Coupe is on the circuit, showing off its unique features. It's got a four-speed transmission, an Offenhauser cross-ram manifold. I want an original type tuck and roll from the old 50s look. After I've chopped the top and then built the headliner, you can tell that there's not a whole lot of room in here. Stuart Warner gauges, just all the original old hot rod goodies that they used to have back then. But it's really awesome to drive. It's fun, it's loud, it's a hot rod. <laughs> Sitting in this car, I'm amazed at how small it is. But small or not, I was trying to figure out how I could take it home without Ernie noticing. What can I say? There's a car for everyone at a car show. And me not being a very good thief, I decided instead to ask him what it takes to get into restoring and customizing old vehicles. People that come to a car show that maybe have a love for cars and have never been able to get into it, and they come to a show and they realize, I can do this. Whoa. He told me anyone can do it, and that all it takes is a little workmanship, pride, and a love for the road. Driving is the real passion. But it's so awesome getting up in the morning and going for a drive in a 1930s car. There's nothing like it. The car show had close to a thousand vehicles on display this year, and it still remains to be the largest free car show in the state of Utah. Back to you, Jamie. Thank you, Caroline. There's another car show in Farmington Station Park tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. If you're struggling with your love life, you may be able to count on your friends for help, whether you want to or not. Arthur Wallace started, was startled to see this ad on the seventh page of the Utah Statesman on Monday. It was placed by his friend and roommate Colby May, who is the advertising manager for the Statesman. May decided it was time to get Wallace a girlfriend. The ad received some response on Twitter from former Statesman employees and got Wallace about 10 new followers on Instagram, but no date offers. Wallace says revenge for the prank may be in the works. <laughs> I don't know if I can, I can, I can say too much, but so far the one we've come up with involves his laptop, KSL, and and free stuff. No, I'm not scared, Arthur. I think you probably will try to do something. The two friends say the prank was all in good fun, but that the war has just begun. If you're looking for a movie to watch, you may want to try one of the shows that played at the Logan Film Festival over the weekend. The festival spent two days and had 32 movies and shorts that came from as far as Tunisia and as close as Utah State University. Films were categorized by length, feature and short, and by type, documentary, narrative and animation. In addition to movies, there were awards, Q&As with directors, and music. This was Logan Film Festival's fourth year, and it was open to everyone in the community. I think this is awesome. I feel like this seems very Cash Valley. It seems kind of like a very like fun local thing. Uh, I bought, I have the pass, so I'm planning on seeing movies all weekend. The festival takes about a year to plan, and crews will begin work on next year's right away. When we come back, ATV's Caroline Peterson will have your Cash Valley weather report. The current temperature is 56 degrees. A group of engineering students at Utah State has designed and programmed an innovative remote controlled submarine. USUB is fully student run. They designed and built the parts from the ground up and are always working to improve the submarine software and capabilities. These students show that computer science is more than just typing on keyboards. Dive right into engineering with USUB. Need an adventure? The Outdoor Recreation Program at USU offers a wide variety of rental equipment. From winter gear like skis, snowshoes, and snowboards, to summer must-haves like kayaks, rafts, and camping gear. From sleeping bags to Dutch oven necessities, we have it all. So stop in and see us. Located at 950 East, 1000 North, in the basement of the distribution building behind Romney Stadium, we're open Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So stop in or call to get your gear today. Welcome back. So, it's been raining out last week, and let's see how the rest of the week's gonna look like. 
Caroline? There's a lot going on in weather today as well as this week, so let's just jump right into it. Let's take a look at the national radar. We're here, as you can see, in Northern California, this upward movement of rainfall and thunderstorms going in through Utah as well as Montana. And for the eastern United States, down here, you can see in um, Florida, they are receiving a lot of precipitation as well. Now let's jump on to the state radar. A lot of rainfall, as you can see, in the northern state, but there are things going on in the southern state as well, some, some fatal floods. So please, if you are going outside, just do so in safety. Now let's take a look at the weekly forecast. Like I mentioned, today we've been experiencing some rainfall, some thunderstorms that will carry into Thursday. We'll see some scattered showers and then possibly some thunderstorms in the evening. But as we get to the middle of the week and going on to the weekend, the temperatures are rising up into the 60s and 70 degrees. So take advantage of the heat. We are in fall getting ready to approach winter, so we don't know how long this heat is going to last. So get out and have some fun. Uh, now let's jump over to sports. Misty. Thanks, Caroline. Coming up, with Chucky e. Keaton back in action, the Aggies are looking for a winning season. But they're off to a bit of a slow start. We'll show you why when we come back. Students in biological engineering at Utah State University have the unique chance through the Synthetic Biomanufacturing Institute to engineer uses for spider silk. Projects developed in the lab include medical coatings, strong adhesives, and elastic woven fibers. These Aggies from Utah State are influencing and changing the face of biological engineering. Join them and leave your mark as well. Welcome back. This is your first ATV Sports of the semester, and we start with football. Last Thursday, the Aggie football team opened its season at home against in-state rival Southern Utah. SUU kicked things off early in the game with this pass right here to number 11 Mike Sharp, who dives it into the end zone, giving them the first touchdown of the game. And here's their extra point attempt, but wait! It's blocked by the Aggies. Deshane Hines goes for the ball, but can't quite get his hands on it. There's a scramble, and finally, Tory Green gets it and runs it all the way down to the end zone, giving the Aggies a two-point return. After that, the game was mostly one, two, three, and punt for both sides. Though both teams did gain a lot of yards running the ball, neither side could get it into the end zone. Then we come to the last four minutes of the game. SUU punts it to Alex Rodriguez. He catches it, and then he's going, 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 still going, and he's gone. Rodriguez returns it 88 yards for a touchdown, giving him the third longest punt return in school history and giving the Aggies a 12-9 victory over the Thunderbirds. It is a win, and... Um... The thing I just told those guys in the locker room is they will be defined um, by how they move forward. Uh, they will not be defined by tonight. Um, at the end of the year, that's going to be a W on our, on, our, uh, on our side. And they look to add another W as they took on Utah Friday night. Thanks to the Statesman, we have some photos from that game. So the Aggies were down 7 to nothing after the first quarter until Lawan Hunt and Zach Van Leeuwen each scored a touchdown. That would make it a tie game at 14-14, heading into the half. But the Aggies weren't able to score another point the rest of the game, and they lost to the Utes 24-14. The Aggies will look to make it 2-1 as they go back on the road this weekend against Washington. Let's kick things over to Lady Soccer now. They hosted the Idaho State Bengals on Sunday, where things got off to a rough start, with the Aggies down by two goals with only a few minutes left in the first half. Looking to get on the scoreboard, they throw the ball in right there to Jane Robison, who passes it to Bailey Hammond, and goal! Leaving the Aggies only down by one, heading into the second half. 
Just a few minutes into that half, Wesley Hamblin gets the ball and boom! She puts it right past the goalie into the net, tying the game. Just two minutes after that, the Aggies take it back down the field and pass it to Jessica Brooksby, who right here maneuvers around a defender and goal again! The Aggies stayed on fire, scoring two more goals in the half, like this one here by, again, Jessica Brooksby, and the Aggies sealed the deal 5-3. to three. It was really important for people to step up and make uh, individual performances and really just go hard. I think that's what really changed. We just had to keep it up there and just keep finding the goal. The ladies head to Utah Friday night to take on the Utes. Let's move things over to the court. After losing three straight games on the road, the volleyball team was back on their home court last night to take on Utah Valley. The Aggies started off strong, winning the first set with points like this very first one you see right here by Lauren O'Brien. Right there, boom. The Aggies lost the next two sets, but they did come back strong in the fourth with kills like that one by number 15, Kaylee Kamalu. Keeping the ball in the air for a lot of back and forth plays, they continued to put up their blocks and set up kills like this one you see by Rachel Gale. The Aggies won the fourth and fifth sets, taking the match three to two. We're comfortable and we're hitting the ball at a good pace and we're making smart shots, going attacking high seams and not hitting the ball low and that's, that makes all the difference in the world. The ladies travel to Northern Colorado Friday to kick off a three game tournament series. Now to your local high school sports. First we go to Preston for homecoming Friday night as they took on Shelly. We start at the second half. Right here, Shelly passes to number 18, who runs it in for a touchdown. That was Shelly's second touchdown of the half, putting them up 34 to 13. But Preston answered back on this return. You can see the lateral pass there to Johnny Thames. He stays on his feet and avoids getting tackled. And looking around the ref, you can see he picks up some much needed yardage for the Indians. The Indians turn that play into a quick drive down the field, where just a couple of plays later, they find Jaden Panter in the end zone for a touchdown. But it was just too little, too late. Shelley takes the win 34-19, to beating the Indians and their young quarterback. We came out, we started a sophomore quarterback, and for a sophomore, first time on varsity stage, he did quite well. The Indians look to come back strong next week as they travel to Snake River. Now to Hiram, where the Mountain Crest Mustangs played the Fremont Silver Wolves. Mountain Crest gets things started in the first quarter with this pass right here to number three, Lavani Damuni. Now he's got it. He's running with it. Nobody's going to catch him. He is long gone. Touchdown, Mountain Crest. Then to start off the second quarter, this time it's Bubba Thompson with this 18-yard pass, and then he runs it the rest of the way in for another touchdown. Fremont would catch up to make it a close game at the end, but Mountain Crest pulled out the win, 37-34. to The Mustangs are back at home September 25th against Weber. That's it for your Aggie Sports today. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Misty. When we come back, what some international students are doing to prepare for USU. Back. You may have made the 206 mile trip from Logan to Jackson Hole in a car, but have you ever tried it on a bike? The 32nd annual bike race, Latoja, took off Saturday morning. Cyclists started in Logan at 6 a.m., hoping to arrive in Jackson Hole, Wyoming by early evening. Racers were grouped into 30 different categories from ability level to tandems and relay. 
This amateur race draws a lot of returners who say it's not about winning, but making friends and having a good time. You know, regardless of how well you place or anything, it's just you build camaraderie out on the road. It doesn't really seem like you would when you're competing with people, but you get in groups and people talk and, and have a good time, so it's just a lot of fun. The course record for Latoja is 8 hours and 45 minutes. There's no word yet if someone broke it. Uh, that this year. You may be seeing more and more international students coming to USU and there's a program that's helping them learn English and prepare them for the university. I went to one of the classes to show you what it's like. This is a group of students in a reading class. They have one thing they are absolutely not allowed to do. do not speak the same language. But English. This is a program called Intensive English Language Institute, or ILLI, for those whose first language isn't English. <laughs> These international students are taking 18 credits per semester just in reading, writing, and speaking. I'm still learning, but it is fun for me. And there is a reason for this much English. They're here in passing. That's why it's really important what we do inside the classroom because everything they learn culturally and academically, they take it into their experience at Utah State. After they pass level four of the program, they will go into their own majors at Utah State. <laughs> I took the ELE level four classes and that helped me a lot to conversation with my classmates right now. And it gives me a lot of confidence. It's also inspiring many teachers seeing them on campus, and even after they graduate, some come back. A student that just came from Saudi just brought me some dates from Saudi Arabia. And so even though when they finish, they still come back. There's a class you can take with Illy students that talks about different cultures and people, for all students, international or not. It helps you with your worldview. You know, it makes me want to travel more. It makes me want to um, know different parts of the world. We bring a lot of diversity to the campus. This reading class discussed one article for the entire period. It may seem slow, but students say they're learning English really fast through the program. Intensive English Language Institute program just celebrated its 45th anniversary last year. Mark your calendars for September 21st because that's when the lottery will open for TEDxUSU tickets. TEDxUSU is devoted to spreading ideas of those in the community who want to change the world. The theme, duality, was chosen to invite different fields of study to share how all of them see the world through their interests. For tickets, all you need to do is go to tedx.usu.edu on the 21st. But I think the beautiful thing about TEDx is that it takes those really complex ideas um, it makes it accessible to everyone. So there isn't a single talk that I feel um, doesn't apply to me. For more information, go to tedx.usu.edu and follow TEDxUSU on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for joining us on ATV News. We leave you with shots of rain around campus. Need an adventure? The Outdoor Recreation Program at USU offers a wide variety of rental equipment, from winter gear like skis, snowshoes, and snowboards, to summer must-haves like kayaks, rafts, and camping gear. From sleeping bags to Dutch oven necessities, we have it all. So stop in and see us, located at 950 East, 1000 North, in the basement of the distribution building behind Romney Stadium. We're open Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So stop in or call to get your gear today. Need an adventure?